Welcome students. So today we are going to have our first lecture video about sign 7. But before anything else, I would like to introduce to you myself. Hello Pusong Kanoshan. My name is Sir Christian Heronimo and I will be your science teacher for school year 2020-2021. Without further ado, let us start our lecture video. Let us start with defining the word science. Science is a systematic body of knowledge that deals with facts. It is a way of gathering information and organizing facts and knowledge. However, it is not only about facts, but also a plan of action. Scientists are practicing a particular procedure in order to come up with a plan so they will be able to gather data and organize these facts to become a knowledge. It involves a procedure for processing and understanding different types of information. Scientific thinking and practices are also important in all our aspects of life. Thus, our first topic for today is about doing scientific investigations. The learning competency for this topic is for you to describe the components of a scientific investigation. Now, scientific investigation is the entire process, but the backbone of scientific investigation is what we call scientific method. So what is scientific method? Scientific method is an organized logical approach used to solve a problem or a question. Take note of the word organized and a logical approach. What is the use of scientific method? We are using scientific method in order to solve a problem or a question and we follow series of steps in order to make this method possible. Therefore, scientific method is made of different steps. The first step in scientific method is observation followed by asking a question. After asking a question or after formulating the problem, we are now going to formulate our hypothesis. But what is hypothesis? We will discuss that later. After that, we are going to perform an experiment. Since this is science, we need to prove our knowledge, our proposed idea with an experiment. After performing the experiment, we are going to gather and analyze the results. After analyzing the results, here comes the conclusion, which is the answer or the final answer to our problem. And then, after stating the conclusion, we are going to communicate the result because we need to share it with everybody. The knowledge will not be kept in our own minds but also will be shared with others so they will be also informed about your discovery. So these are the steps in scientific method and we're going to discuss it one by one. Now, I'm sure that you are familiar with this idea. Let's say you want to become a plantita or a plantito. If you are familiar with the events that we have during the quarantine, we were taught by this pandemic on how to become nature lovers because we missed going outside, we missed talking with our friends personally, and the only thing that we can do inside our homes, one of which is to become a plantita or a plantito. So let's take this as our example in describing the components of scientific investigation. Now, the first step in scientific investigation is to make an observation. Observation is the use of all or some of the senses, such as the sense of sight, taste, feel, hearing, or smell, to gather information. So before anything else, the very first step in solving a problem is to identify that there is one. And how do we do that? We are going to observe. We need to observe in order for us to have a problem to solve. 
Because if we do not observe, there will be no situation that we need to settle. Now, based on our situation, we observed that in order for us to become an efficient plantito or plantita, we need to apply fertilizer. So we observed that fertilizers can help the plants to grow faster and healthier. So that is your observation. So therefore, in our next step, you did a background research and found out that there are three fertilizers available nearby. What are those? So let's name them as fertilizer A, fertilizer B, and fertilizer C. So these are the fertilizers that we want to apply to our plants. However, since there are so many fertilizers available nearby, we don't know which fertilizer is the most effective one when it comes to planting. That's why our next step in scientific method is you ask now the question. You are now going to formulate your own problem. So from the observation, you need to identify the problem that you want to investigate. Try to narrow it down and be very specific. So given the situation, the observation that we gathered, that there are about three fertilizers and we don't know yet which one is effective, therefore, our common questions will be what happened? What will you think will happen if I apply those fertilizers? When did it happen? How did it happen? And why did it happen? Therefore, we are starting to formulate different questions in our minds. Therefore, in our situation, we can say that if we apply no fertilizer, it will not have en not, uh, enough uh, effect to our plant. But if we apply different types of fertilizers, we are able to see different results but we are not yet sure which of the three fertilizers are the, is the most effective therefore our question is what is the best type of fertilizer in growing orchids so let's take orchids as our plan so this is a very good question so after observation we formulate our problem and our problem is what is the best type of fertilizer in growing orchids so this is a problem that is said to be testable when we say testable we can conduct an experiment out of this question or we can conduct an experiment in order to solve this question we need to conduct an experiment in that case our third step is to formulate a hypothesis but what is a hypothesis a hypothesis is an intelligent guess it is a statement which contains the possible solution to your problem but this is not yet the final or this is not yet the answer with further evidences we need to prove the hypothesis whether it is correct or not so in order for us to be guided with our experiment we need to formulate a hypothesis first we are not going to proceed right uh, we are not going to proceed directly to the experimentation part. We need to formulate a hypothesis first before we proceed to experimentation. So, usually, a hypothesis is stated in if and then format. Take note, hypothesis is usually stated in if and then format. That is our format. So, let's take the situation again. Assuming that there are three available fertilizers, we need to come up with a possible solution. We need to come up with a possible answer to our problem. Therefore, we can have the first hypothesis. If I use fertilizer A, then it will make the orchids grow bigger and faster. It can be another hypothesis like this. If I use fertilizer B, then the orchids will grow bigger and faster than fertilizer A. Or it can also be like this. If I use fertilizer C, then the orchids will grow bigger and faster than other fertilizers. Or it can be like this. If I add fertilizer A in an orchid, then the growth of orchid will increase. Now, the question is, are we sure with these answers? Are all statements already correct? 
Well, we are not yet sure. That's why we need to test it. Hypotheses are just possible solutions. It will just give us the guide of how our experiment should be done. So looking at the statements, we can say that these hypotheses are said to be testable. Meaning to say, if I use fertilizer A, will it make the orchids grow bigger and faster or not? That's why we need to test it. If we use fertilizer B, will it be the better fertilizer than A and C? Or is it the C? So it means that in hypothesis, we are not yet sure with our answer. That's why we need to test it further using experimentation. So after formulating a hypothesis, we are now going to perform our experiment. But what is an experiment? An experiment is an activity done to test the hypothesis. And the experiment must have the following. So, if whenever you're going to conduct an experiment, you should consider the following. The first one is materials to be used. After which, you need to provide your step-by-step -step procedure. So, don't forget, next time that you're going to conduct your experiment, make sure you have your materials prepared as well as the step-by-step -step procedure for you to be guided. You are not going to think of your own procedure. You need to search for it. Remember that. Now, let's say for example, in our situation, our materials would be four orchid plants. Why four orchid plants? We only have three fertilizers. Remember, we need to test if the fertilizers are effective. So therefore, we are going to add one more setup, which is a plant with no fertilizer. One liter watering pail four 500 ml pots so they should be the same i will tell you on the next lecture video why should be a need for similar uh, characteristics or factors for all experiment setups three types of fertilizer so we need to test all of them so we should have the a b and c type of fertilizers ruler that we're going to use to measure whether the fertilizers are effective or not we are going to measure the height of the plant and the data notebook where we are going to write all of our observations. An example of experimental procedure will be like this. It must be in a flowchart manner. So first things first, we need to purchase the materials. All of these materials must be purchased. We need to prepare them. Prepare the 50, uh, 50 grams of fertilizer A, B, and C. So there should be equal amounts because we are just going to identify which among the three is the best. So they should have the same amount whenever we apply them. Hindi pwede yung magkakaiba-iba ng amount. Let's say for example, fertilizer A, I will apply 50 grams. Fertilizer B, I will apply 100 grams. Fertilizer C, I will apply 150 grams. No, we are not going to measure the amount the effectivity in terms of amount we are going to measure the effectivity in terms of the type of fertilizer if we want to measure of or if we want to know the specific amount that is said to be the best amount for an for a fertilizer that is another question that we need to solve and we can uh, settle that in another situation but for now our question will focus on which type of fertilizer is the best and not which amount is the best okay so after that we need to apply the fertilizers to each orchid plant and we lead and we are going to leave one plant without fertilizer we are going to measure the plant height every day for 10 days so our entire experimentation will last for about 10 days and every day after every afternoon we are going to measure it using a ruler in terms of centimeters and we are going to record our data in our data notebook. Next. So, whenever we apply fertilizers, the, nu the nutrients will be absorbed by the plants. That's according to our research. But we are not yet sure which fertilizer is the best. After which, we are going to observe the plant growth. And lastly, we measure them and record the data in our data notebook. 
Next, after the experimentation, we gather and analyze the data. In order to do that, we need to summarize our data. We are not going to just write down all of our observations. We need to arrange them and organize in a manner that we can understand it very well and very easily. So we need to make a representation for easier understanding of your analysis. Okay? So we need to make either a table or a graph where we can record our data and summarize it in a manner that we can understand it easier. So an example will be like this. So let's have the table 1 and the average height of plants using fertilizers A, B, and C. So this is a one way of summarizing your data. We have here the type of fertilizer, A, B, C, and no fertilizer. And we have the plant height in three trials. Sir, why do we have three trials? In an experiment, a minimum, the minimum number of trials or replicates is three. We need to replicate our setup three times to maintain the or to prove the validity of our data we don't just apply only one uh, only one fertilizer for each plant but we need to repeat it three times to make our result valid so in our first time or first trial these are the data that we gathered 10.2 centimeters for fertilizer a 8.7 for b 9.2 centimeters for c another trial we repeated our experiment again another time with the same setup these are the data and then for the third time these are the data and then we are going to compute our average height how do we compute for the average height we get the sum of the first second and third trials and divided by the number of trials which is 3 so 10.2 plus 10.5 plus 9.9 .9, get the sum of it divided by 3 is 10.2 centimeters so for fertilizer a we got 10.2 centimeters of average height for the past 10 days for fertilizer b 8.97 for fertilizer c 9.6 and for no fertilizer 7.17 so as you can see, if you're going to analyze the entire table, looking at the average height, we can easily tell which fertilizer now is the best. Obviously, it is fertilizer A. Because given the fact that it has an average height or the plant with uh, applied fertilizer A has an average height of 10.2 centimeters, as compared to 8.97, 9.6, and 7.17 of the others, fertilizer A we can say that it is the best another way of representing your data is through the use of graph if you are a visual uh, type of person in by just looking at this graph we can say which fertilizer is the best obviously it is fertilizer A it has the highest graph among the rest. So what will be our interpretation? Based on the data gathered, orchid plant that is applied with fertilizer A has the highest increase in height with 10.2 centimeters. Now that we have our data, we are now going to state the conclusion. So what is a, what is a conclusion? A conclusion is a judgment to summarize the experiment. In other words, it is the final answer to your problem. It will either prove or disprove your hypothesis. So this time, given that we have already the results, we are now ready to decide whether we make or whether we choose to approve or disprove our hypothesis or our possible solution. So in stating the conclusion, let us take note of our problem. Our problem earlier is what is the best type of fertilizer in growing orchids? So do we have the answers now?
Yes, because we already conducted an experiment. And based on our experiment, we have the data gathered. So let us go back to our hypothesis. If I add fertilizer A in an orchid, then the growth of orchid will increase. Now, do you accept or reject your hypothesis? Take note that the hypothesis is just a possible solution or a possible answer. We need to test it to make it correct or to make it proven. Now, given this hypothesis, do you accept or reject your hypothesis? Yes, you accept your hypothesis and our conclusion will be fertilizer A is the best fertilizer in growing orchids. So as you can see, this is our question. What is the best type of fertilizer in growing orchids? A conclusion is the final answer to the question. So if this is our question, what is our conclusion based on our hypothesis that we have tested earlier? Fertilizer A is the best fertilizer in growing orchids. And this is the answer to our problem. Now, to explain certain phenomena or observations, you are advised to repeat the steps in the scientific method several times. This is because we want to make your experiment or your entire scientific inv investigation consistent, valid, and reliable. In the event that your experiment does not support your hypothesis, it may be necessary for you to do the following. First one, Check whether your experiments are done properly. Sometimes, errors occur when you do not perform experiments carefully, uh, especially when you are planning about it in the very first place and you missed one step, it may affect your results. Just like in an examination, whenever you do not follow the instructions very well, it will affect your test score. Next. Check whether your hypothesis needs to be revised. Sometimes your hypothesis may be incorrect. The experiments you did are all consistent and gave a specific outcome. However, your hypothesis is not properly stated or formulated. So you will need to make necessary revisions or adjustments to come up with a very good hypothesis. Always remember that a hypothesis needs to be testable. And the third one is check the statement of the problem or your question and even the observation. At times, your observations may be even wrong. It is then necessary for you to go back to and where it all started and observe more carefully. Did it seem or sound exactly as it did or could your observation be biased? Take note that in an experiment, you should not be biased. Whatever you observe, you need to record it. Okay? Now, the last step is communicate the result. This is the last step of scientific method where you need to share the result with others. So, they will be informed also about your discovery. Always remember that answering the question or having the conclusion is not the end of a scientific investigation. The end of the scientific investigation will be when you are going to share your discovery with others just like in crimes in investigation the problem solver will not keep the result on his own but he needs to share it with others so that we will be able to come up with a particular way of understanding what is happening about or around us and there you have it we have the seven steps in scientific method. Let us now summarize the lesson. The scientific method is an organized, logical approach used to solve a problem or a question. Always remember that whenever we talk about scientific method, it is an organized approach, a logical procedure in order to solve a problem or a question. Who will do the question? Who will formulate the question? It is you who is curious about your surroundings. And there are seven steps in scientific method. We have the observation, followed by asking a question, formulate a hypothesis, perform an experiment, gathering an analysis of results, 
state the conclusion, and lastly, communicate the results. I hope you learned something about this lecture video. Be sure to answer the activities in the module so you will be guided variable about the steps of scientific method. Thank you for watching and see you on the next lecture video.